You ever just stare at your hand and think, what the hell are you? <laughs> like, really, what's in there? <laughs> we've been asking that question for 2,500 years, and guess what? Every time we think we figured it out, reality just pulls an Uno reverse and goes, oh, no, 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 sweetie, go deeper. <laughs> Let's go back. Ancient Greece. So you got Democritus sitting around in a bedsheet eating olives, just vibing. <laughs> and he goes, hey, bro, what if everything's made of invisible Lego bricks? <laughs> And his homie Lucippus is like, hey, yo, call him Atomos, uncuttable, that's fire. <laughs> and then they high five and invent the atomic theory. <laughs> no experiments, just vibes. <laughs> Meanwhile, Aristotle shows up like, no, 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 everything's just a mix of earth, air, fire, water. You just need the right blend, like a cosmic cocktail, and boom, matter. <laughs> and people believed him for 2,000 years. Because, I don't know, beard privilege? <laughs> then came the alchemy era. Basically, science's emo phase. <laughs> Lots of fire, robes, and symbols. These guys were like, we're gonna turn this dirt into gold, solve death, and become wizards. Bro, relax. <laughs> but hey, they didn't get gold. They got glassware, lab techniques, and a healthy respect for explosions. <laughs> so basically, alchemy tried to be magic but grew up to be chemistry instead. <laughs> Fast forward to 1803, we finally get our nerd king, John Dalton. His big idea was that all atoms of one element are identical. Dalton's like, let's bring back the uncuttable ball theory. Elements are made of identical atoms. They have mass, they combine in ratios. And everyone went, whoa, he's using math. This is real now. <laughs> Dalton basically turned atomic theory into Ikea instructions. <laughs> But wait, atoms weren't done messing with us. In 1897, along comes J.J. Thompson with his cathode ray tubes zapping stuff like a mad scientist. <laughs> and he's like, I found something smaller, tiny, negative. Let's call it an electron. Boom. Atoms aren't indivisible anymore. And then this man says atoms are like plum pudding. What? <laughs> this guy looked at the fabric of reality and said, tastes like dessert. <laughs> <laughs> this theory thankfully didn't last. In comes Ernest Rutherford. He decides to test the pudding by shooting things at it. He shot a super thin gold sheet with particles, mostly passed through, and some of them bounced back. And in that moment, he discovered the nucleus. The atom is not a pudding, everybody. It's a tiny, angry, dense core with some electrons zipping around in mostly empty space. And everyone's like, oh wait, we're mostly empty space? Which explains why I fall apart at the tiniest inconvenience. There's barely anything holding me together. <laughs> we thought we were done. We had the proton, the neutron, the electron. Simple. Cute. You thought! <laughs> Enter Bohr, Heisenberg, Schrodinger, a.k.a. the boy band of confusion. <laughs> Bohr says, electrons only exist in fixed orbits. Schrodinger says, well, technically, they're waves of probability. And Heisenberg, you can know where it is or how fast it's going, but not both. So we're all like, cool, cool, cool. So electrons are blurry, commitment-phobic ninjas. <laughs> if we had Tinder for particles, you matched with an electron, but it's ghosted you, literally. It's a wave now. <laughs> Just when we're cool with electrons, someone's like, yo, protons and neutrons made of quarks. What? <laughs> so we go deeper. We had a fun time naming them, though. Up quark, down quark, strange quark. <laughs> Top quark, bottom quark. <laughs> Charm quark. Well, it really is like a tinder of particles. No, I swear, that's not a list of fundamental particles. That's the emotional journey with my last date. Charm, <laughs> then strange, then up, then down, then it's top or bottom, depending on who pays the bill. <laughs> <laughs> so, combinations of these quarks glued together makes up protons and neutrons. Yes, the force that holds quarks together is literally carried by a particle called a gluon. We are all just a subatomic arts and crafts project. <laughs> Gluons, in turn, are made up of bosons, which are the carriers of three of the four fundamental forces in nature, strong and weak nuclear force and the electromagnetic force. The fourth one, gravity. That diva doesn't show up to quantum parties. 
Well, one of these bosons is really the main character, the Higgs boson, giving mass to everything. In 2012, the physicists really flipped out when they found it. We spent $13 billion to find one particle, and it was there. And this whole unhinged theory, with its charming quarks and moody electrons, is called the standard model. It is the most accurate scientific theory ever. It's brilliant. And it successfully explains, drumroll please, about 5% of the universe. 5%. The other 95% is dark matter and dark energy. That's not science. That's the universe's IT department saying, have you tried turning it off and on again? We don't know what the rest of it is. Don't touch it. <laughs> and gravity, the diva again, cannot be explained by the standard model. We still don't know how to make it work with quantum theory. Gravity, the drama queen really like. Sorry, I don't vibe with the others. I'm freelance. <laughs> so, what's in there? Atoms. Then subatomic particles, then quarks, then bosons, then... Questions. At some point you realize, the deeper we go, the more reality just wiggles. <laughs> Confused? Good. That means you're accurately modeled after the universe. <laughs> so the next time life feels messy or pointless, just remember, you're made of ancient stardust held together by particles that don't even know where they are half the time. <laughs> and yet somehow, you can love, laugh, cry, and microwave popcorn. <laughs> You're a walking quantum miracle. Thank you. Stay weird, stay curious, stay uncertain like a good electron.